Hey, it's Amalia here. I'm a physiotherapist and horsemanship coach. And it's my belief that we need to be the best versions of ourselves, both mentally and physically, so we can make our horse's job of carrying us as easy as possible. We also spend so much time investing in our horse's health and fitness, and we often neglect our own, which means when it comes to riding, we might be the weakest link in the partnership. And we know we're supposed to be exercising anyway, so why not make it rider specific and something that can also improve our riding? In this video, you will see a sample of the type of workouts that I've included in the eight week rider specific exercise program that I developed for riders who want to become more fit, symmetrical, balanced, strong, coordinated, and achieve that effortless looking riding position that we all desire that allows us to move in harmony with our horses. If you love this workout and you want to join me in the eight week rider specific exercise program, just click the link in the caption or head to AmaliaDempsey.com and I hope to see you in there. Welcome to today's workout. For today, you'll need your mat, you'll need a rolled up towel, your exercise ball, some weights and some sticks because the first exercise is that good old stick hands exercise, which I absolutely love for developing those independent hands. So let's get our balls out and get started with the very first exercise. If you don't have two dowels like this, you could just use anything in terms of like what you've got around the house, like, um, two whips or, well, most horse people have two whips around the house, um, or you could have two mop handles or broomsticks, whatever you can find. You could even sort of use the wall, but I find that sticks are the best to develop those hinging elbows. So the aim of the game, as you know, is to keep your hands still as your elbows hinge up and down. And also you want to keep the sticks as still as possible, right? If you're, if you're noticing they're going back and forth, it might highlight the tendency for you to move your hands around a lot when you're riding. So the whole goal of this exercise is to keep everything as still as possible. We're going to go all the way through to the next section of exercise because I really want to make the most of this stick hand exercise today. See if you can get rid of one stick here and practice just keeping the other hand really still or as still as the stick hand. And then in a moment, we're gonna swap over to the other side. So a really valuable exercise to work on your soft, still, quiet hands, which is actually more of a function of the elbow if you watch closely the elbow is hinging in order to keep the hands still. Let's swap over stick on the other side now. Trying to keep the free hand as still as possible. Maintaining your upright posture as you're bouncing up and down. Remember, if your elbows are locked, your hand will bounce up and down. So those elbows need to be nice and loose in order for that hand to stay in place. Okay, let's lose our sticks now. You can place your ball to the side. We're gonna do a balance challenge where we're standing on one leg. Let's start with the left side. And we're bringing the right leg out to the side and back behind us. So hip abduction, hip extension, whilst maintaining the balance on the other leg. Watch that that hip's not collapsing out to the side. So keep everything as straight as possible. And you're bringing the leg out to the side and then back behind you. Trying not to change too much of your trunk position as you do so. So try not to like lean forwards to bring the leg back. Nothing wrong with that, but right now we're just practicing isolating those leg movements. Wearing that crown on your head. That's my favorite imagery to help with posture. But there are other things as well. You might like to think of books on your head or fitting between two panes of glass. Give that side a break. You might have felt that in the left glute area as this uh, lateral hip muscles help to stabilize the standing leg. We'll swap over to the other side. So standing on the right leg, left leg abducts and extends. So anyway, yes, on the topic of posture, um, another thing my mum used to say to me when I was 
competing as a teenager and child was she would say, ride like the queen, <laughs> you know? So I'd imagine that the queen would just, you know, have this really um, upright posture and almost a bit of a snobby posture in a way, um, because my habit is to round my upper back. Just watch here as you're abducting the leg, watch the tendency to externally rotate the hip, so keep the toes pointing forwards. So yeah, maybe that imagery of riding like the queen might help you improve your posture when you ride. Okay, shaking out those legs. We've got a bit of a coordination challenge as well as working on our leg strength coming up. So we're gonna move into some squats, arms are forwards. But what we're gonna do is as we squat down, we're gonna split the arms, come back to the center, and then split the other direction, keeping the chest upright. So splitting back to the center, splitting back to the center. Now watch that your knees aren't falling in here. So keep the knees tracking over the toes. So the hips, knees, and feet are all in alignment. Sending the bottom back behind you as if you're squatting down on a public toilet. <laughs> you should start to feel that your body's getting warm now for today's workout. All right. Now we're gonna do that same arm movement, but we're going to be in a lateral lunge position. We're gonna go um, alternating directions. So arms out in front. We're gonna lunge down and split the arms. Come back to the center. Lunge to the other side, split the arms, back to the center. Really making sure that you're landing as soft as possible. And make sure that that knee, again, isn't falling in. So keep that knee pressing out as you land. Really folding through the hip as you laterally lunge. So creating that crease in the front of the hip and the center leg remains straight as you lunge out to the side. Last few reps here. Alrighty. You'll need your weights for the next exercise. My heart rate's already up, I don't know about you. We're gonna move into a lunge hold. So we're gonna move the left leg forwards, drop the right leg down. And we're gonna bring the arms up overhead and we're just going to sink the weights from side to side. So what this is going to do is help to activate our lateral trunk stabilizing muscles, as well as our leg stabilizing muscles as we're in this lunge hold position. Great exercise for those riders who tend to have like a collapsed waist when they ride or they notice that one shoulder is a little higher than the other, or one hip's a little higher than the other. All right, we need to repeat that on the other side next. So bringing the right leg forwards into that lunge hold position making sure that the knees are not falling in, keeping everything in alignment, arms up overhead, and then laterally flexing from side to side with straight arms, weights up overhead. Keep those weights glued together. Maintaining the bend in both knees. 
You'll find that the arms want to bend here, try and keep them as straight as possible. Five more seconds to go. And resting back down. Keep your weights nearby, but do grab your ball because we're gonna do some wall squats against the wall next. Some bull wall squats. So grab hold of your weights and pop your back against the ball. Feet a hip distance apart. And we're gonna move into some external rotation as we squat down. So as we're squatting down, we're gonna open the arms up as if you're holding a sign up. And then you're gonna stand up and lower the sign back down. So here's my sign and change my mind. I don't wanna show it to you anymore. That's sort of what I want you to think in this exercise. So keeping those elbows up nice and high. We're working on the shoulder external rotators here the rotator cuff muscles, which are involved in stabilizing the shoulder. Keep those elbows up as high as you can. Okay, let's place the weights down to the side, but keep your ball in position because we're just gonna do some single leg squats now with the support of the wall and the ball. So standing on one leg, you might need to alter your standing position slightly. And we're just gonna do some small bends through that standing leg. So pushing your back into the ball. We're not gonna do the full length of time on each side. So we will swap over halfway. You should feel the quadricep muscles may even shaking a little bit in this single leg squat. Let's swap over now. And you might find that one leg is more difficult than the other. Trying to keep everything centered, hips are level, so you're not lifting one hip up or dropping one down trying to keep the foot pointing forwards as well. Okay, I'm gonna do a few more reps here because I don't think I quite got enough on this left side. Okay, let's now move into, or onto the floor. We're gonna go into a downward dog to plank exercise. So, when you're ready, finding that downward dog and moving into a plank position. So we're gonna go from plank to downward dog. Plank, downward dog. Bend the knees if you need in that downward dog position so that you're not having to round your back too much. If you're not quite ready for a full plank yet, there's nothing wrong with just playing around with the idea of getting into the position and then retreating back to your downward dog. It's kind of like approach and retreat in horsemanship, right? All right. Staying in a similar position, we're gonna move into, so go into four point kneeling, um, not with your feet out into that plank position. So four point kneeling, we're gonna do a push up plus. So sliding the shoulder blades around the rib cage, pushing the floor away, and then letting the chest sink in between the arms. So the elbows stay straight throughout this exercise. We're really targeting the scapular movement on our rib cage here. So scapular protraction and retraction, and the strength in our scapulothoracic muscles. Really important for riders because we need strong scapulothoracic muscles to stabilize our shoulder girdle when we're riding. So our arms kind of have like a stable base to work from, but also a mobile base, right? We need our shoulder blades to glide back and forth when needed, when we need to reach our arms forwards 
for whatever reason, like over a jump or moving our arms back and forth when we're following the movement of the horse's neck. Okay, so up next, we have got some tabletop towel crunches. So this is where your towel comes in. So going onto your back and into that tabletop position with your towel on your shins. And we're going to crunch up, grab onto the towel, lower back down, and then place the towel back up onto the shins, lower back down, arms overhead. So this helps you bring awareness to your tabletop position, because if your shins aren't parallel to the ground, the towel will roll off. If you want that extra challenge, as you lower back down, you can extend those legs out. Extending the legs. Okay, that went quickly. <laughs> All right, so next up we have got Bear crawl lift with the towel. So with the towel, place it between your knees, back into that uh, tab uh, well, reverse tabletop, four point kneeling position, tuck the toes under. We're gonna lift up into that bear crawl, lower back down, squeeze the towel, lift the towel up, drop it back down. Open the knees, lift up, lower back down, squeeze the towel, lift the towel up. So every second one, you are bringing the towel with you. So adding those adductors in with this exercise. If that's too much, you can just play around with your bear crawl movement. So you can play around with just lifting up and lowering back down. If you have like a small ball, sometimes that can be a bit uh, less messy than a towel that likes to unravel. Um, as you do this exercise. Okay. Whew, I hope you found that a little fun and different. Okay, we have got, we're gonna do another bear crawl, but we're gonna lose the towel this time and do some alternating arm lifts. So go back into your bear crawl. Again, if that's too much, just play around with practicing that bear crawl. But I'd like you, if you're able, to hold the back roll and alternate lifting one arm up at a time and then one leg back at a time. So left arm, right arm, left leg comes back in, right leg. So you stay hovering the whole time if you can. If you absolutely need, you can have a break. in between. But you kind of know when you're genuinely needing a break or whether you're just being a little soft and taking the easy option. All right, resting back down. Okay, I am working up a sweat. It could be that I'm in a long sleeve top as well. We have got some Rollbacks now, so more core work. So sitting down, knees are bent, arms are forwards. We're gonna roll back one vertebrae at a time till you're all the way down on your back and then reverse. So lifting the arms up, peeling your back one vertebrae at a time off of the mat until you're straight. All right, take a little rest here, and we're gonna move into some crunch variations. Now, you will see a more advanced option up here in the top corner, 
but I'm gonna walk you through the easier options first. So kind of standard level, we'll just be crunching up to one side and lowering back down, even if that's just the smallest crunch. And we're just gonna be starting on this right side alone. If that's too easy, you can pop the legs up into tabletop and then add the crunch with the tabletop position. If that's still too easy and you want more, you can extend the leg as you lift up. So it's like a half bicycle in a way. So take the option that suits you. Really squeezing through those right obliques as you crunch up. Feeling the burn in the right side of your waist, that's a good thing. Take a little rest. We're not gonna go straight into those left-sided crunches. We're gonna do a variation of a rollback now. So grab onto your stability ball. And starting in that rollback position, but holding the ball out in front of you, we're gonna roll back just a little bit, and then we're gonna rotate left and right, and then roll back a little bit more. Rotate left and right. Roll back a little bit more. Rotate left and right. So keep moving through that sequence until you're all the way down. Now, this wall is limiting me a little bit, but ideally you wanna go all the way to the side. Roll back a little bit more. So this is the point in the exercise where it's a little bit more challenging. Roll back. Roll back again. Roll back even more, rotate. Roll back a little bit more. Keep going, if you're all the way down, you can work yourself all the way up again. But I'm all the way down. That was perfect timing, actually. Very good. All right, we have got your right crunch now. We're gonna use the ball for the next exercise coming up though, so keep, keep that nearby. Let's move into that left crunch now. So again, options, just crunching up a little bit, keeping the legs down. Even just a small movement will be challenging. You might even like to start with the easy option and, and build up to the more difficult one or start with the more difficult option and work your way backwards. So option two in tabletop. Option three would be extending the right leg and moving into that half bicycle kind of crunch. Feeling the burn in the left side of your waist now, the left oblique area. And relax. Okay, let's move on to some back extensions on the ball. So you can roll your body over the ball, extending the legs, bringing the arms up behind your head lowering your body and then lifting up. So slowly lowering your chest down and then lifting up as high, as high as you can go, lowering down. So really working the posterior chain muscles here, the muscles in your back, even a little bit of your glutes, your thoracic, your middle back, really good postural muscles, really good postural exercise rather, and a really good exercise for anyone who tends to spend a lot of time in those rounded postures, which you know is basically all of us. So it helps to kind of reverse that, uh, that habit. Okay. You can lose the ball. Next up, we're moving into a little hip extension exercise. So back into that four point tight position. And we're gonna extend the right leg with heels down, so toes back towards you. And then we're gonna bend through the elbows. So you're kind of in like a half push up. And then we're just gonna pulse that leg up towards the ceiling. Try not to turn the foot out, so keep the toes pointed down. Or if anything, a little bit 
inwards. So this movement is hip extension and it's really an important movement to practice. Like we are strengthening the posterior chain here again, glute muscles, lower back muscles, even a bit of hamstring. And we're working our triceps, just holding this position. But what I like about it is we're practicing the movement of hip extension, which is really important for horse riders because when we put our legs back for an aid, say, a lot of people just tend to bend the knee when really we need to focus on extending through the hip. You might like to give your wrists a bit of a roll here before we move into onto the other side with that same exercise. And then we have a little kneeling series after that, which I'm really excited about. I'm excited about all of these. I try and make these exercises as fun as possible for you guys. Extending the left leg, heels down as they say, bending the elbow so you're in that half push-up position and just pulsing that leg up towards the ceiling. Watch that you're not collapsing too much through the hip. So trying to keep everything stable, centered, neutral, as we always say. Really making sure that that knee is remaining straight. It likes to bend, because the hamstring likes to take over in this exercise. Similar to when we're riding, when we want to put our leg back, the knee wants to bend, the hamstring wants to engage rather than the hip extending. So the glute initiating the movement. Make sure those toes are pointing down and not turning out. Keep that knee straight. Okay, kneeling series. Let's get some weights. Remember that scissor hand movement we had at the start? We're gonna do that, but in like a kind of like a half kneeling bent over position. So here, you know, you're like, you're cross country. You're maintaining your two point position. We're gonna split those hands back to center. Split, back to center. Now center is still like 90 degrees in relation to your shoulder, right? So it's gonna be hard to hold the weights depending on what weight you've got if you're holding them parallel to the ground. Keeping those shoulders down, so try not to scrunch the shoulders up towards the ears. Really helping you maintain your postural integrity as you're in this like mimicked two point position. I don't know if you've ever ridden cross country, but when you're having to hold two point position for a long time at speed, you'll really feel it. In your, in your back muscles, in your posterior chain, in your postural muscles, because you're having to really maintain your stability in that position for a length of time. Now let's bring the knees a little bit wider. So we're gonna be in a wide kneeling position now. If kneeling's uncomfortable, please have a towel underneath. That mimics two-point position, we're just gonna press release here. Well, it's sort of more like, you know, almost like we're a jockey, right? And we're bringing those arms forwards and back. We're gonna pick up the pace a little bit here if you can. So, you know, pretend you're uh, about to win the Melbourne Cup. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty hard to go fast with, with these weights. And, you know, let's not open the can of worms about the racing industry and whatnot, but we're here to exercise, we're here to improve our riding and whatever imagery helps us get through, that's what we're gonna do. Not long to go, keep going, keep pushing those arms, pulsing those arms forwards. You might feel this in the biceps. All right. Whew. Actually coming out of that, I could almost feel it in my lower back muscles as well. Fantastic. Okay, lose the weight. We're gonna do some kneel rising. And then we've only got two more exercises to go and we are done for today. So controlled kneel rising. So keeping your body upright as you lower back down and then up again. Feeling the quads controlling this movement, maintaining that neutral back posture as you work through this exercise. The tendency for me, and maybe for you too, is to like arch through the lower back as you come up. You wanna try and keep all of that pretty steady as you come up to the top. A 
You might like to bring the arms out in front for that challenge. If you're really crazy, you could even continue to hold weights for this exercise too. All right. I have to say, we do have a plank coming up, but it's the second to last exercise. The last exercise is a bit more of a cool down. So give me everything you've got in this last plank, 55 seconds. We've got this, get into your plank. You can be onto your knees if that's where you're at. But if you want that option, up onto the toes. Forearms are pressing down into the mat. Elbows are directly underneath the shoulders. Elbows are pushing into the ground. Your gaze is just above your hands. Your neck is long. Core is engaged, glutes are engaged. Knees are as straight as possible. And let's add a little rock here. So rocking forwards and rocking backwards. A little distraction to get you through the last part of this exercise. One thing I like to think about in a plank as well when I'm holding it is, what else have I got to do today? Right, so I'm not thinking about the burn, thinking about I'm taking my mind elsewhere, mind over matter. What else are you doing after this workout today? All right, resting back down. See, that went so much quicker. Well, at least I thought so. Okay, guys, last exercise. Let's go into this diamond sitting position here. You can bring the legs out further away from you if you find it difficult to stay upright in that position. We're gonna reach one arm over and then repeat on the other side. So a little dynamic stretch to cool down. Working through that lateral flexion, stretching out through the adductors. Congratulate yourself on completing today's workout. I don't think I'm gonna be doing too many more workouts with the top on. Oh, with the long sleeve top on rather. <laughs> you probably wanna make sure that I'm wearing a top in these workouts. Um, so yes, anyway, uh, I hope you really enjoyed today. Hope you got a lot out of it. Hope you got a little sweaty like me. And give me feedback. I wanna know if you're enjoying these styles of workouts. Well done for finishing. I'm happy that you're here and I will see you in the next video.